Yeah, Tony Sayeg is here, and there wasn't enough discussion, Tony, on Iran. Absolutely right, Maria. And Ambassador, I wonder what you think. Under the Obama-Clinton foreign policy, Tehran has gained dominance over four Middle Eastern capitals, Beirut, Damascus, Sana'a, Baghdad. This is the Obama-Clinton record expanding the hegemon of, of the Shias in Iran. Why are we not talking about that more as a vulnerability? And as much as ISIS is critically important, we're almost subordinating that Iran conversation and not discussing it enough. Why do you think that's happening? Well, I think we need to focus more on it. You know, there's an urban legend out there that Hillary Clinton's going to be tougher than Obama in foreign policy. Uh, her policy is Obama's policy. She is lashed to the mast of the Iran nuclear deal. She has never deviated one iota from it. Uh, and it's that that's really given Iran the possibility of fulfilling their, their uh, destiny as they see it in the Middle East. And, and to me, again, it goes to this basic question. For all of Donald Trump's foibles, uh, is the sentence that America has to serve four years of Hillary Clinton, really, does the punishment fit the crime here? Mm. Ambassador, it's Kevin Kelly. <clears throat> One of my questions to you has to do with what you just mentioned on the nuclear deal with Iran. How do we progress forward and what do we do? It seems like there's no turning back now beca because you have other countries, they're enabling their companies to go over there and do business with Iran. It's starting to develop. We've given them the $150 billion. We made the ransom payment of 1.7. How do we move forward? What policy stances can we take? Well, I think uh, if, if Trump is elected president, in his inaugural address, he should abrogate the Iran deal. It was a strategic debacle when it was agreed to, uh, in part for the reasons you state that Iran knew exactly if they could just entice European and American businesses into deals, they would hope they would never face pressure again. Right. But the fact is, Iran is on the road to nuclear weapons, and uh, we have to act that way. It is a threat to Israel, it's a threat to our Arab friends in the region, and ultimately, given that Iran is still the central banker of international terrorism, uh, if they decided to give nuclear weapons to terrorists, they wouldn't need ballistic missiles to deliver. This is deadly serious for us, uh, and the Obama administration has punted away uh, uh, security in, in ways that are still hard to calculate. And w that's incredible. I mean, it's, and we know that Hillary Clinton hasn't gone there, right? We haven't heard a plan from Hillary Clinton. I, I want you to answer that real quick, but I've got to get to this news overnight as well, Ambassador. Two missiles missiles fired at a U.S. Navy destroyer off the coast of Yemen by Iranian-backed Houthi rebels. Um, you, you've been mentioning this, but, but what do you make of it? What, what do we do about this at this point, Ambassador? Well, I think this is, I don't think the Houthi rebels uh, and their ally, the former president of Yemen, fired these missiles by accident. I think uh, there are Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps officers there with those missiles. I think this is Iran once again saying our behavior around the world is not changed by the nuclear deal. If you thought you could buy us off uh, with that deal and we'd suddenly comport with your view of how we ought to behave, forget about it. They're showing now they've still got the back door of the oil producing monarchies on the Arabian Peninsula, uh, and by attacking in the Bab el-Mandeb Strait, they're showing the risk that they can pose to international oil traffic and everything else that goes through the Suez Canal at the northern end can, of the Red can I Sea. Just, can I just point out that Iran also has $1.7 billion in ransom money that we sent to them in cash to now fund the Houthi rebels and Hezbollah and any other terrorists around the world, Ambassador? Of course, and this, this is the Obama Clinton policy make no mistake about it she is Obama's third term period close quote so what is she going to do then if, if she wins the election what do you think her plan of action is regarding Iran I think she's going to continue to try and persuade them to be nice. I mean, I think that is the Obama strategy, and it's based on a view of America, which I believe she shares, that if we simply reduce our presence and our visibility and our uh, demanding posture, that other countries will say, well, they no longer feel threatened and they'll behave nicely toward us. It is a disaster in, in the making. We've already seen it in uh, the consequences over these last eight years. It'll be four more years. Her policy is Obama's policy. Her efforts to distinguish herself uh, are really trivial and at the margin. Yeah. Uh, and so I think if you like Obama, you'll like Hillary. I would have, I would have liked to hear more about that last night. I, re I really would have. Yep. I agree. Good, Let's hope for the third debate. Let's hope for the third debate. <laughs> Ambassador, good to see you. Thanks so much for weighing in this morning. John Bolton there.